Hey, what's up, YTBC? What's up, fam? Cuzos and Cuzettes. This video here is going to be about some old school pointers, some old school tips, some older methods that could get you possibly to your destination as a as a combative artist quicker or or with better uh will or just different methods, techniques and implementation you can use maybe to give you a different feel to to inspire you and tons of other things we could say about that. All right? And before we get into that, I can't stand it when you ever been, you know, you're having a conversation, you're talking about fighting or running, and someone's always trying to say that just because the nowadays athletes are um, allegedly bigger, stronger, basically got better doping, uh, belt and drugs and stuff, that they're better than the older athletes when a lot of their older records still stand to this day. I mean, Jesse Owens' joint just got snapped by Usain Bolt. Um, I mean, Cat still got 90 and 100 win in the row streaks and knocking out 40 people in the row from 19. I mean, it's all types of records, man. Bill Russell, MJ, and, and this spans all the sports, all sports. I know there's tons of them. Josh Gibson in baseball, there's tons of them. But, for example, just because a dude is bigger and he's cut up like Hercules. For example, you got Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley, when he makes weight and gets into shape before a fight, I'm a, the dude look like Hercules. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, his six pack is literally bulging out of his body. But you get him in the ring, and he's probably I mean, you might as well be in a pillow fight with your baby sister. I'm, the, the, I mean, no diss to Tim Bradley, but the dude he has 10, 11 knockouts with 30 win. So. If you listen to this now, if you're an up-and-coming combative artist, athlete, fighter, warrior, in any, in any sport, get that out of your head that you got to be bigger and stronger. Yes, stronger, but I think y'all just focusing on the physicality of nowadays, okay? So get all the muscles and all them needles and pills. Get that all that shit out your head. This video is going to help you segue into becoming the true great champion you could possibly be. All right, so old school tips and pointers. Here we go, especially for, for fight of artists, for combative artists, for boxers, because we love boxing. Number one, y'all, jumping rope. Jumping rope and shadow boxing. This definitely is going to improve your mental clarity, your mental um, ability to see things before they happen, your speed, your reflexes. And I mean, how many of us nowadays can say that we've seen someone as fast as Ali or as fast as... Uh, Willie Pep, and I'm just talking about film, because I know a lot of us haven't seen Willie Pep in actuality. Willie Pep or or Sugar Ray Leonard, um, compared to some of the faster fighters of nowadays. Let's say Floyd, Pacquiao, who else is real quick, y'all? You know, um, who else is real quick? You know, Earl Spence or somebody. This is someone that's real quick. Can we say that the athletes nowadays are quicker or faster than the ones of past? I know there's always a good argument, but I'm always going to go with the people, you know, that the legends say are faster, that you got people cutting off light switches and getting into bed before the room is dark. I'm going to go with them until my eyes have seen better. But anywho, old school methods. Again, jumping ropes, shadow boxing, sit-ups, push-ups. Now, here's a, um, a peculiar but yet very helpful one to help strengthen up your jaw and your cheekbones. They say that Jack Dempsey used to use some type of thick, um, sticky, real, real chewy gum made out of pine tar. And he would chew it, you know, vigorously, rigorously all day, you know, and sometimes even while he was training to strengthen up his chin and his jaw. Now, I'm not clear on what that is, but I remember my granddad used to have some type of, it's almost like a tree sap type of tobacco, tree sap and tobacco put together. And it was real, real chew. I mean, I never chewed it. But it just looked like what's often to bring his teeth up. Maybe it was the dentures. I don't know. But that's that's one old, older method you can implement. Training with animals. Training with animals. Um, dudes who got the old spirit. Dudes who want to surpass the legends. Y'all seen the scene from Rocky where, where Mick makes Rocky chase down the goose or the chicken or the pigeon. Some type of yard bird. Whatever it is. You got another form of training with animals. Bulldogging. You're running with your animals, running with 
horses and dogs, you know, out in, the, out in your farm, on your pasture, in the street, wherever. Sparring kangaroos. <laughs> you can spar you a kangaroo, yo. How come on TV we always see kangaroos with gloves and shit on? Who is putting gloves on these kangaroos? They even have... They, they even have... Kangaroos with gloves on in this arm. Um, it's a video game called Tekken. In case y'all ain't aware of it, there's a video game called Tekken, and there's some characters on there. Kangaroos. They got some animals on there. A bear, kangaroo, and the kangaroos got boxing gloves on. But yeah, if you think you're tough, see if you can box a kangaroo without getting your face bashed in. Put strap on some gloves and go head to head with an animal, man. Let's see what else you got. All right, what else? What else? <laughs> Sucker, you ain't nothing. It said that Joe Lewis used to haul big blocks of ice on his back and shoulders up steps of tenement buildings um, where he used to train. Outside of his training camp and where he used to live, pardon me. Where he was training and where he was living. He used to haul up big blocks of ice up steps, up flights of steps. And he personally said that that helped him develop the strong physique that he had as a youngster on you know at, at the beginning of his boxing career as a young ch as a young you know up and coming champ so big big old blocks of ice like when bruce lee was in the movie breaking those big blocks of ice when the dude was pushing he was wah, punching through him so imagine you carrying something like that up a flight of steps to build up your back and you know your, your delts your traps your, your legs your, your, just the whole body also something similar to that there's a legendary there's another legendary combatant his name's alexander corellin now he's a grappler legendary grappler legendary wrestler and he used to haul up a whole refrigerator up flights of steps to his room wherever his room was before his matches excuse me yeah it's like a hotel room you go to his matches hotel room. they say he would get his refrigerator or a refrigerator shipped in and he would carry it himself no help up the steps to his room <laughs> Another method, another old school method. Rowing. Y'all, rowing, kayaking. It is said that Jack Chappie Blackburn, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis's trainer, at their lake, Joe Lewis had a training facility, not a facility, but a cabin really where he would go and train for all his fights, was at a lake. I can't remember the location because Sugar Ray Robinson used to go to that same spot and help Joe Lewis train, and he would help him train, vice versa. But it was at a lake with a log cabin, you know, trees, woods, forests. Anyway, legendary trainer Jack Blackburn would make Joe Lewis row all around the lake. All around the lake. Like just one day, take out a day, give them two pedals. All right, Joe, row around the lake, man, 10 times. And that's that's another old school method. And, and a lot of... Um, athletes do that nowadays, especially you know with the CrossFit thing coming to. You know what? I, that's another thing I want to say. I like CrossFit, but to me, at times it's extreme. But they bring back a lot of, you know, tried and true or legendary or folktale type ways of training with the swimming, then getting out, then doing upside down push ups, then climbing a rope, then throwing a ball, then doing jump lunges, then running around the track. I mean, they bring back a lot of good stuff. Granted, I don't think they should do it in that way, in that method. And they need to test those dudes to see if they juicing. So go look at you. Joe Lewis was also known to catch flies in midair. Coach, trainer, teacher, Jack Blackburn used to make him catch flies in midair to, to improve his reflexes, to make his reflexes quicker. So the Karate Kid... Daniel son, Mr. Miyagi and all them, they were not the first to do it, all right? Almost 50 years prior to that, almost 50 years prior to that, the brown bomber Joe Lewis was catching flies, okay? Now, another training tactic that um, Joe Lewis used to do was, and, I, uh, and if y'all haven't heard of this, then younger fighters, please implement this. He would tie his right hand behind his back and hit the bag, hit the speed bag, hit the heavy bag. And to the extreme... Sometimes, not only would he tie his right hand behind his back, but sometimes he would tie his trainer, Jack Blackburn, would tie his right hand to the ropes. You know, like to the ropes, like a strap match in WWE, and make him spar somebody. Imagine that. Someone tie your hand, your dominant hand to the ropes, and then make you spar, mother flusher. 
Ooh, that's hardcore. So if you're trying to get on that level, y'all, of a Joe Lewis, whose record still stands to this day, we're holding the title, any title, defenses, all that, you know, maybe you need to experiment with that. See where your heart is. You're too ugly to represent us color folks. Calisthenics, calisthenics, calisthenics. Can't say it enough. Y'all say it with me. Calisthenics. Ali, they say, was the calisthenic king. He didn't lift any weights. None. And you know, because of his trainer, Angelo Dundee, Angelo Dundee didn't believe in none of his fighters lifting weights. But Ali was calisthenic king. They said he was on his calisthenics. Even though he would be in there in the gym playing, half-ass sparring, going serious and sparring when it's supposed to be sparring. But they say he was calisthenic king. You could catch some videos of him doing that up and down bicycle thing off his back. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've seen it before, it takes incredible body strength and endurance to do that. It's like a up, it's a, how can I explain? It looks like a leg lift, bicycle sit-ups, and regular sit-ups combined. And you're rocking your body up and back. It, it's just amazing. You got to have excellent body control. Ali used to do them a lot. Calisthenic King. Another old school um, exercise, tree and rope climbing. Now, in all honesty, I've seen more grapplers and uh Muay Thai artists more talking about I mean we're all warriors and stuff do this than than boxers than pugilists but add that to your regimen man rope climbing is excellent rope climbing is just as good as rowing it's like rowing but you're going upwards man you build up all your back all your shoulders chisel all that out biceps triceps neck climb try climbing a 20 foot rope see what that does to you man try climbing it three times within five minutes try climbing a tree you know but I mean that is an excellent workout I mean you see if you ever gripped or seen a monkey or a ape climb and they climb trees all day imagine you just took one day out and try to climb the tree all day man you man shoot your grip would be the grip would be magnificent your grip would be you probably grab the planet and squash it you know so go look at you Gene Tunney y'all Gene Tunney was said to have frail hands and bad hands. And they said he was his body type wasn't really meant for the heavyweight division. So Gene Tunney did a myriad of exercises to strengthen his hands. And we already had the video bad hands and bad gloves. But he did a, a, a ton, a whole gamut of exercises to strengthen his hands, his fingers, and his wrist, which in turn gave him 48 KOs out of his 65 wins. All right? And I know just from grappling that one of the main exercises we will always do is hands with the exercises because just your grip alone, it, 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 it adds so much to your overall strength. You know, I, I, We know you got strength in your biceps, your chest, your, 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 your thighs and your legs, you know, your big muscle groups. But when you strengthen something as small as, you know, a neck, or a set of fingers or some toes. It, it gives you such an advantage. Y'all trust me on this. <laughs> we would do grip exercises and when you grab somebody, man, they can't pull away or you could easily pull them in just based on your grip. You you might not, but you might only curl 30 pounds. But if you gripping like Danny Hodge and squashing an apple and you grab somebody, I'm telling you, man, they're not going nowhere and a lot of people get shook up when they get grabbed tight or hit hard. But back to Gene Tunney. Gene Tunney used to do exercises to strengthen up his grip, his fingers, and his hands, and his wrists. And it gave him a lot more KO power, even though his body really wasn't meant for the heavyweight division. You out, sucker. To strengthen his fingers, Gene Tunney would do fingertip push-ups. And if y'all haven't done them, you know, you start off with just, you know, all five of your fingers or, or your four fingers and your thumb. Then once you can get do 10, 15, then you take one away. Usually your pinky first. You could do it on four, then you can take away, you know, the ring fingers, and then you could do it on three. So he was doing fingertip push-ups, all right? And then he would also do them off the wall. And off the wall, it's easier for you to, to isolate fingers. They said he would do them off the wall, like just the thumbs, and then, you know, the thumb and the pointer. And then he got good at that, doing it consecutively every day. Then he started doing them on the ground, on the flow. And he, that's how he would, those are one of the exercises he would use to strengthen up his fingers. Now the way he used to strengthen up his knuckles. Now we already know he got frail hands. He got bad hands. What is the secret? Boxers of old. We know y'all punching each other, trying to break each other's face, trying to punch each other's lights out. We know you fought over 120, over 80, 
over 90, 150 fights. How are you keeping your hands intact? Well, there's a, there's a method used to strengthen your knuckles and your overall hand, or at least put another coat of skin over it. And it's called soak your hands in brine. All right. Now, Gene Tunney will also do this as well, y'all. He would soak his hands in brine. Now, what is brine? Brine is a basically a mixture of salt and water, and sometimes vinegar, and you know, sometimes they would add other special ingredients. Some, usually, something simple, some type of household item or something in nature you, that that's used to you know to, as an astringent to toughen up skin. All right. Well, brine. That's basically what it is. It's just salt and water. And the old school heads would use actual seawater or ocean water but and, and, and another thing brine is also used to uh well marinate and you know cure and steep certain foods you know y'all chicken you know you know your grandma used to soak stuff in certain liquids you know salt water or lemon water and have the house smelling strong or smelling sweet all that but anywho brine you soak your hands in the brine all right and some trainers even use more extreme methods like uh, animal urine. But you soak your hand in the brine, the seawater or the salt and water mix. And after a while, a skin grows over your knuckles. And almost like it makes your knuckles feel like leather almost. It kind of withers the skin, but then it builds it up back almost like leather, like cowhide, you know? So you're soaking them in that salt water, man. And after a while, you know, your leather's going to just fists get hard and feel like you could punch through a wall. <laughs> now here's one thing Gene Tunney and other fighters used to do to strengthen their wrist. They wrist, y'all, your wrist. We don't want your wrist getting snapped by you throwing a punch wrong, by not turning your fist down and you snap your wrist or, you know, just the tapes break or you don't have your wrist tape or you punch in heavy bag. Like my silly ass without having your hands taped, you can snap your wrist. Now one thing, now this is also the wrist and the hands. One thing, um, many boxers, pugilists, fighters used to do to strengthen their wrists is squeezing a tennis ball, squeezing a rubber ball for hours at a time, day after day, year after year, squeezing a tennis ball. Another big one, big, big one is, which is one of my favorite exercises, is, swing, is swinging the axe, swinging the axe, chopping lumber, swinging the axe, chopping lumber is great, actually is great for the whole arm the whole body really but for you to have that tight grip and able to swing it it it, it does it does so much for your grip you, you won't know what i'm talking about unless you do it so swinging an axe swinging a, a a sledgehammer your hands tighten up around that wood or that plastic or that metal whatever your axe is made out of swing as hard as you can and then be able to hold it for that long if you ever chop wood for an hour man you got calluses sometimes you be bleeding and then, of course, we know like the body, like the muscle, it breaks down. You know, after you cut open or have a blister bust, you know, your body builds back up stronger. Like your muscle, you do heavy weights, the fibers break down, then it comes back stronger. So internally, it knows it has to be able to handle that weight if your ass keeps doing it. Same thing with your hands, same thing with your skin. So if the weights toughen your skin or, or you know, very, um, very practical, very uh, applicable. To, to use and to implement in your training and of course we've already went through this in the other video um, with the with the exercises and home nature's home workouts the wood chopping my personal favorites even though we already went over is chopping wood chopping firewood slinging swinging a sledgehammer youth out there young up and coming champions this one of the most age old exercises for not only pugilists for just for People that you know, men specifically. I mean, I know women do it too, but men that just want to bulk up and get their grip tighter, chopping firewood, y'all, swinging a sledgehammer. Everybody from Archie Moe to Joe Gans, everybody from Duran to Floyd Mayweather, either chops wood or slings or swings the sledgehammer or both. Okay, I saw a video the other day and it was a clip of Floyd Mayweather chopping wood. I didn't even know that he was even up, but of course, silly me, you know, Floyd is a big student of the game. But I saw him as a video up on YouTube of him chopping wood. And he said how it's the most basic workout ever for a boxer. He said it's one of the greatest and best workouts 
for him to do was chop wood. And I mean, he had one of them huge mammoth logs. And I was like, man, ain't no way he's going to chop through all that. But it looked like his goal was to sit there and chop, chop, chop until he got through that big log. And if you're doing stuff like that, then I know you want point. Then I know you want another level. But yeah, but chopping wood, man, one of the most age-old exercises to tighten up your grip, your hand strength, your punching strength. It's just such a great full body exercise. All right? So this video isn't a diss, but it's, it's more, um, I can't help from being an, an historian. And I was supposed to be giving y'all tips, but I'm getting in all these stories and shit. But um, these exercises and tips from the older school, from the older legends, is supposed to help you in your now path to become great, to become champion, to become legendary, to become tougher, to get all this bullshit out your head, man. You don't have to dope. Well, well, I'm on the fence with blood doping, but you don't have to use dope. You don't have to use coke. You don't have to use steroids, PEDs. You don't have to use GNC. You don't have to look like Hercules. You look at those pictures of Sugar Ray. Dude, look like if you were to see him on the streets with his shirt off, you'd be like, oh, man, this dude. But this mother flush had knocked out over 100 people. You look at pictures of Jack Dempsey. Besides his mean, growling face, these dudes look like if you if you if you put your finger on them, they body be soft like the um, what's the little marshmallow, the Pillsbury boy, like they body are going. It, it looked like if you touch them. So a lot of these boxers that are knocking dudes jaws off their lips, lips off their jaws, their bodies didn't look super strong like a Bradley or or um, or Tyson or Frank Bruno. But anyway, man, you really want to be great, man. I'm always gonna be biased towards the old school. But y'all just look towards the older methods. They're really going to help you out, especially when you when you max out, when you plateau with these newer methods or if you get too doped up, your veins get too big, or if you keep testing positive. Just believe in yourself. These older methods, I know they're more natural and it might be more, you know, aggravating to do or or just lame. Motherfuckers be calling stuff lame or old or boring and these are the actual things that's going to get you to the creme de la creme. You know why they call it lame? Because it takes a lot of hard work. Hard work. That's why they call it lame. And these tried and true exercises, they, 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 they made you focus. They made you concentrate more. They made you be out in nature. They made you build more of the inner you than, than, the, than the for show, the, the, the for show out of you. See what I'm saying? It built more of your inner you, your character. So then it would be easier for you to develop those great skills, to develop that great hook it it uh it conjured up that fire within you and, and it's hard to conceptualize it's hard for me to conceptualize it into words but those old these older exercises are not lame they, they're not dull they're actually very difficult especially if you want to do them for an elongated amount of time or if you're intense with them but you know it, just build up the inner you with special exercises like these because all in all, they, it makes you legendary, especially when you when you built up that that inner you, that inner fire, and you go in the ring, and or you and you sharpen your skills. And I know I'm all over the place here, Greg Day, but just be legendary, man, with your training. If you want to be a legend, you got to do stuff legends do. You, you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. You you know you you want to you want to accomplish something great, you got to be great yourself first internally and that's what these old heads were doing so i don't want to hear none of that it's too difficult or i can't find a tire or a tree or just just try it out you might not like it it might be difficult at first but i'm telling you it's, it's going to build it's going to build mental and spiritual facilities or maybe it's faculties that you thought you never had don't represent us color folks and the inner you we all know makes you legendary so that's enough trash talk for now y'all i'm up here all sloshed up y'all stay strong see if you can implement some of these older tips some of the legendary tips of the older pugilist and uh we love walks you out sucker